In this video, I thought I would share with you some tips for the car boots. Before you go to the car boot, when you're at the car boot, and when you finished, and when you got home from the car boot. Just for a few tips for everyone who's either a beginner, wants to resell more, buy to resell from car boots, and, and even full-timers or part-timers have been around so many car boots, I think they know everything. Not saying they do, but just nice to see if you get a few tips out of this, that's great. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any other tips that I missed out on, then that'd be appreciated. So, we've got 16 tips here, go through each one. So the first one, check um, your internet for car boots near you, um, like type in Google car boots in Guildford, car boots in Manchester, comes up. Check their websites. Check their websites for their prices, when they're open, and um, if early entry fee, because you need to save up some cash, some change for the um, entry fee, early entry fee for this one, and the car park. Also, do look up on the Facebook pages, Instagram, like local Facebook pages. Um, the car boots to sell Facebook pages, they might be different. Some of the car boots say send you a message anyway to be able to um, know where car boots on. But do your research, check out the car boots beforehand. You, you, you don't want to sort of think, oh, oh, I should have gone to that car boot, didn't know anything about it. But do your research, that's key. Number two is make sure you save up change. Best thing to save up a lot of change way before the car boots, do it months before. I do between January and March, because there's not that many on. Um, usually got a lot of stock, like this year, I've got a lot of stock to um, resell. So I'll save up a lot of change, because you can't be going around the car boot with a 10 pound, 20 pound note, first thing, early, for the first half hour, like six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock, when your car boot opens, because the seller, guarantee, 95%, won't have change, and say, sorry, I haven't got any change. You'll be like, oh, can you hold an item for me? They sometimes say yes, sometimes say no. Um, but best to have change for the entrance fee, for the car park, they may be £2 each. And for that particular item, because there'll be a lot of resellers sniffing round um, first half hour or so, grabbing items left, right, centre. So get that change. You can go, reseller will be like, um, the seller will be like, that'll be £4, please. Yep, here we go, £4 there, done. Not say, oh, sorry, you've got to change. Uh, not at the moment, so you might miss out on an item. And then the third one is about the, um, make sure your trolley, if you've got a trolley or a sholly, um, like, like the um, flat one, big flat one, or the tall trolley with two wheels or four wheels, mine's a two-wheeled one. Make sure it's in good condition. Clean, the wheel's not going to fall off. Um, no holes in your bags. So nothing's going to fall out. If you need to buy a new one, then they're available on Amazon, Sainsbury's, like for supermarkets, um, in DIY stores, that sort of thing. And not costing too much, usually good deals on the trolleys to have one. And also what I do as well, take my backpack to put my five bags for life. I take five bags for life as well, just in case I get a big deal that just doesn't go in my trolley. Then I need to go to the car, back to the car. And I've also got another... Uh, four or um, bags for life. So, yeah, make sure you've got bags for life, your choice is in good condition, and sometimes take your backpack just in case you need to put anything else in there. Like, if it's a hot day and you want to put your jumper in, because it's quite a lot of the time during the morning, early, it's cold. So, you put a jumper on if it's, or, or in a coat, so you put it in your backpack. Then, number four, check your, this is a good one, to check your car tyre pressures. So for example, you don't be going down, down the road like 40 miles down for a car boot, 20 miles, whatever it is, and your tyre um, deflates or gets a puncher. It can happen anyway, but to make sure, because it's a legal requirement to have your tyre pressures at a certain pressure anyway, it's always, you can find that in your car or in your log, um, your handbook as well. Um, also check your space in your car. Some people bring boxes and bags to put in their car so um, they can have space to put 
a lot of items. Because if you don't get to a car boot and go, oh damn, your car's full of so and so crap, and you haven't got no space to do it, so you fill in ages to um, have space. So good to have a lot of space. Take out what's not necessary and have some space to put your items or your bags or whatever it may be. Stack them up nicely so it doesn't fall over. Number five, this really annoys me. Anything it does. People wear proper shoes, i.e. boots, big boots, wellies. Um, uh, sometimes you can wear trainers if it's not too muddy, but normally boots or wellies, something sustainable because you're going to get muddy at some point in a car boot if it's on grass. My local one's like really high up for the grass. I don't be able to cut it now, but last year it was so far up, quite high up, and it got really muddy. Because um, I did wear the trainers, it got so muddy, in fact. So I wear the boots or the wellies. Some car boots are on hard standing, so that's fine to wear trainers. Don't be going around car boots, even, even if you're hard standing or grass, wearing like sort of flip flops or high heels. Stupid, really, to do that. But yeah, wear sensible shoes, like your clothing. If it's a really cold day, make sure you've got your hat on. Um, if you want to wear your mask, wear it if you can. Um, and they tell you to wear it, wear it. Um, sensible coat, jumper, shoes, jeans, whatever. Make sure you take a little jumper beforehand because it gets cold in the morning. If it gets really warm, take it off. You you know you've got your you can wear shorts, a little t-shirt. Yeah, be sensible with your clothing. Five, number six, get cash out for the day before or a couple of days before because there's nothing worse going to a car but you haven't got any money out and then go out to get you know, to some cash. So make sure you've got enough cash with you. If you're a beginner, I say take fifty pounds out with you, and then see what you've got. If you can only afford that, if you afford over hundred pounds, great. If you afford a lot more, some people like full time and take four hundred pounds. That's great. If you have money over, save it for the next car boot. Um, then you can say, oh, I've got fifty pounds for the next car boot. I've only got to take another fifty, or that's that. That's my limit. So take whatever your limit is for that car boot, but get it out a day or two beforehand. Easier that way. Number seven. Seven. Set your alarm because there's nothing worse than getting up. I've done it. We've all done it. Get up late and down, rushing around, not even no breakfast, no cup of tea, feeling like crap, getting late to a queue, and and then not getting a lot. But set your alarm, i.e., 4:30 a.m. to get up, get your change, get dressed, washed, have a cup of tea, a bit of breakfast, get time to get to that car boot, get in that queue, whether it's outside or inside, or even if your car boot starts at 6 a.m. and you don't have no queue. You just get in there, park, pay your money, park, and into the car boot. Make sure you're there nice and early. Number eight is check your weather. Nothing worse than driving miles to a car boot and it's not on because it's weather's really bad the day before. It's waterlogged or it's spitting and they close the car boot. Check your weather online, on your weather apps, BBC weather app, um, on the telly for the, for the weather. Um, and check your Facebook groups for the weather for closing it. Or if I send you a message, make sure you're on the mailing list for the car boot. I'm on one mailing list for the car boot. They say it's on this week or it's not on due to the weather. Great, so you know that day. Very occasionally, you're going to go to a car boot at some point in your lifetime. And, and, and it'll be like, ah, it's not on. But you didn't tell me. And then you realise that they've only told you half an hour later, like at 7 o'clock in the morning or whatever it is, that's really annoying. But normally, 9 out of 10, you should know beforehand if it's on or if it's not on. Number 9. 9? When you arrive at a car boot, make sure you get there early, get in the queue, um, and then to get in before you go. Because some start at 6am, some start at 7 if you've got to go into a queue. Like my local one starts at 7 you're going to a queue, make sure you're in that queue first, handful, otherwise you know resellers are going to be there. Because if you go to so many car boots and you know which reseller go to which car boot, you, you know that reseller is going to be there and who it is. 
you might not know them by name or where they live, but you know they're local, and that's it. You know they're going to pick up as well. It's like really annoying. If you can get beat them to that item, you're thinking great, and then spurs you on to get more items. If you don't, you can have a low face and go, oh, I can't be bothered, and you miss out loads of stuff. Number ten. When you go into the car boot, make sure not, not in brackets to chat to people. You can chat like after you've finished or beforehand in the queue, but tend not to chat because you may miss out a load of stuff, especially the first half an hour of that car boot. Um, because it's really difficult with your friends you see there, or your family, or if you're a YouTuber, difficult when someone goes, oh, I've, that's Peter Ray. Oh, Peter? Peter Ray's Adventures? Oh, yes. I've seen you on YouTube, done this video and this video. It's really hard to, like, break away. But you've got to be polite and say, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Keep subscribed. More videos coming on the channel. And today I'm doing a video. Do a bit of promotion quickly. And then they might ask you, I saw your video on this. Hopefully you got some good stuff. Yes, I got some good stuff. Um, if you see me around again later on, I can talk a bit more. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get around the car boot, hopefully have a good car boot as well. Just, just, just be polite. Don't just say, oh, I've got to go on a car boot, sod off. No. Um, then 11, first half the car boot, mainly um, no time to really look up items. Because if you're looking up items and you're missing out on stuff, you're like, okay, an hour or so later on, it may be okay to look up stuff. Um, like, if you're going... Um, a couple of stores down, even if you've got an item in your hand, look it up. Some people are not bothered, they know what you do anyway, but you still get a good deal. They get a good deal for themselves. If you go dealers or if you go to a normal, everyday person just selling a few items every so often, but no time really to do the research. Well, here we go. So, first half the car boot, you're rushing around. There's a lot of resellers there. Um, it's good to get a good deal all the way through, especially the first half hour. But make sure that when you've got your change ready, you're pre prepared for the first half hour or so to pay that money. If it's £5 for a board game or £4 for a particular game you know it's going to sell for 30 then pay it. Because you know you've got an item in your hand, it's secure, you paid it, it's in your trolley, in your bag, and that's it, done. And also with that, talking about bags and trolleys, never when you're going to get a good deal, don't leave your trolley miles away or your bag on the floor beside you. Guarantee someone's going to half inch, nick, grab your item your bag. Have happened to me before, thinking, hang on a minute, I've had that. Where's it gone? So make sure it's with you, in between your legs or your, or your, or your, or your trolleys, like right in front of you. You know where it is all times. But then when you've got like, you've been round a couple of times, Later on, an hour later, you can strike a good deal. Good to bar barter um, and, and haggle as, as well. More after the first half an hour or so. And also, in that respect, um, when haggling, they, they don't just say individual items, what's the worth, what's the worth, what's the worth. It really annoys everyone. Just, just go for it and go, right, I've, I've, I've got these four items here, all, all this bundle, what's your best price on it? And they say twenty pound. Can you do eighteen, seventeen, eighteen? And then they arm and arm say no, sorry. Okay, twenty pounds fine. Or if you want to go eighteen, they say yep, yeah, that's okay from me. Just have the items in your hand or near you, like in a huddle, because someone's going to come along and go, that's done. How much for this? Da -da -da done. And off, off, off your way, you might miss out on it. Thirteen. So if you need to go to the car, don't worry. Go to the car. Some you can go to the car from the car, uh, from the car boot to the car without having to take a ticket. My local one, you've got to take a ticket um, because you have to go round where they pay to get in, show your ticket, and that's it. So you don't pay again. So it's easier that way, but you can relieve your pressure on, on your toilet if it's full or your bags are full. Don't hurt your arms with bags, how heavy they are, with your trolley, you can put it in your car, when you know you've got enough space to put it, just shove it in, and then what you can do, sort it later on, then you've got an empty trolley, empty bags to buy more stuff to resell for good money. Boom, 14. So, 
first time round, there's a quick look round, usually a tip, look round, and that's that. And then you quick look around, you know, like, if you're doing your research beforehand, like your board games, toys, games, so that sort of thing, so well, you go, okay, I've, I, I saw sound, if, if, if you're new to this, you like, I, I, I saw sound sound on YouTube, do, do a haul, we brought so many of these, this might sell well, I've seen, I've got this one here, thinking about it in your head, I'm going to go and get it, it's worth sound, so you've got your change ready, done, and off the next one. If you've been round once, like up and down again quickly, you go up again, and then what happens is you've got your um, time to look around slower in your boxes, in the bags, in, in anything, just check. There's always time to go around one more time. If you've been round three or four times, you've done your slow one, boots round, and your fast go round. Always go around one more time because you never know what you're going to find. 15. Um, what I do personally, I have the a draft saved on my phone. Star that draft so it doesn't um, it doesn't lose it. So you can write on there quickly what the item is, what you paid. So because I forget, because obviously I've got Asperger's, so I forget quite a bit of these things. And then you know when it comes to your research and put it in your where you put in your books or in your spreadsheets, you know what you paid, what your item is. And then, when you get home, after you've um, been to Carver, you got home, what you normally do, get, get the trolley out, bags out, put your bags so, where you're going to put them, um, get your clean material, clean products, uh, or wipes, clean your trolley because it's going to be dirty, whatever it is, even if it's on um, hard standing, it can't be dusty and dirty, because um, mine's stored at, at home. And then what you do, get a bit of tissue, two bits of a tissue, and then put it, um, I, I do it in the back room, put it, your trolley on, get your stuff out, you know your trolley's cleaned, put your trolley away, and then what you can do, that's good practice to do, what I do, is get your cleaning products out, clean your items up, and then each one you clean, it's drying, you can mark up and do your research on that, what it's worth, and um, put it in your books so you know when you come to your spreadsheets or your QuickBooks you know it's um, going to be done because you can always forget to do that um, particularly and then especially with the board games you can check your board games out as, as well get your post-it note write what it's um, paid what your board game is um, what you paid what it's worth and all the contents because you may say one missing so-and-so, so when you come to list it, you know you've got one missing, or if you want to put it in a um, pile for bit spares and repairs, or, or just spares, I should say, for board games, it's easier when it, like doing that, rather than doing that when you come to doing a listing. You spend. So that's basically what you can do, tips what you can do before the car boots even started, or even going to be on, um, to at the car boot, to be at home, doing research, cleaning your items, so you know, when you come to list, it's there and done dusted. If you've got any tips that I haven't said or forgotten, leave them in the comments below. And all you can say is like, share and subscribe. Catch you later. Take care. See ya.